We have spent a grand total of £114 million. Let's go see where that money's went. So as promised in the last episode, it was a massive overhaul of the squad. £114 million spent, £36 million brought in. Let's quickly review some of the outs. Luke Matheson went to join FC Lorion for £10 million. An English right back who I didn't actually want to sell. I would have liked to have kept this boy as our backup player and then part of the homegrown players that we have to have in the squad. But he was kicking up a massive fuss about wanting a new deal. I went off, well, I went off from a new contract and he wanted a huge amount of money. And it wasn't something I was prepared to do. So we decided to let him leave 10 million quid in the coffers. Next up to leave was David Fernandez. I was starting centre-back from last season when I joined PEOK for £8.75 million. £7 million of that up front. He's a fantastic centre-half, actually. A really, really good player for the Championship. And pretty well-rounded and probably somebody who could have done a job for us in the Premier League. But funds were needed, so he was sold. Next to leave was Terry Baker. I was starting goalkeeper from last season. Another English lad leaving. 6.75 initially. Could rise to 8.5. Went to join Standard. A decent enough keeper and somebody who could have found himself in the first 11 if we weren't able to find a suitable replacement for a relatively decent fee. But uh, we did and he's left. Lee Rogers went to join Middlesbrough for £5.75 million. Another English player but one that was never really in our squad even in the championship. So he's went to join Borough and uh, he'd probably do pretty well getting game time there. Oliver Kirkwood also left to join QPR for £2.4 million. He's a player we, we have been trying to sell since the January transfer period. And he's now finally left to join QPR. Killian Adam left. He went to join West Brom for £1.7 million. A player who didn't get really the game time he deserved after signing for us. We still made a profit on him, which is nice to see. Jonathan Deguez left to join Brentford for 325k. A free transfer who never really made it into our first 11. So a nice little bit of profit there as well. A few players who we were trying to sell that we couldn't get sold, so they've left out on loan. Martin Toth, we're getting 150k per month in terms of his loan deal. He's valued at 7 million, a decent centre half, um, but due to the foreign player limit, he had to leave. Nizmet Nikolic is another one who went and joined Batty, 100k per month in terms of his loan deal. Valued at 4.3 million, he's still got potential to grow, so hopefully he gets plenty of first team football at Batty and uh, he will come back to us a better player and someone who might be worth a little bit more and have actual some interest in uh, leaving permanently. Quinton Mongan was our backup goalkeeper from last season, he's left to join FC Groningen on loan, uh, 20k per month for him, not, not very much, nobody was interested in a permanent deal. And the rest of this was all just loans of younger players with a little bit of potential to try and get them some first team football and see if they can come back to us a much better player. And that takes us to the ends. And I am, there's a big smile on my face because I am really, really pleased with the deals we've been able to do. So Barry Rodriguez joined us on loan from Wolves, a centre half. We needed some English talent to come into the squad. He is very much a backup option here for us. On loan from Wolves. For the rest of the season. He's got a decent bit of potential about him. And if we could have signed him permanently. I might have been interested if it was cheap enough. But I'm happy just to have him sitting in the squad doing not a lot. This free transfer was nothing to do with me. I don't think he's very good. No he's not. I should have cancelled that deal. <laughs> and now we start to our proper ins. Robert Faulkner joined us from Luton for £1.7 million. He will be our backup goalkeeper. We needed an English lad after selling Terry Baker. And uh, we made a profit on Baker and spend 1.7 million pounds of that money bringing this lad in he is just going to be a backup marlon gill then joined us from once caldez a good name 2.7 million pounds central midfielder he will be our starting central midfielder for this season now two and a half star current doesn't look too great going by the the coach report but he's not a two and a half star player mentally he's fantastic physically he's spot on as well it's his technicals that let him down but he is a ball winning midfielder and with tackling 14 marking of 12 Teamwork and work rate, all those things combining, he's got the stats in the right areas and I think he's going to be absolutely phenomenal. He's got potential, he's similar to the likes of Kevin Majaya or uh, what was his name for Huddersfield. I can't remember his name, the central midfielder we signed for Huddersfield. Um, very, very similar, very raw, but very, very talented. Next to join us was Alexander Shretor from uh, Roma for £3.2 million. Pounds. This lad will be our starting player on the left-hand side, playing in the inside forward role. Now, wingers became a real issue for me in terms of being able to find the right sort of players for the right sort of fees. It doesn't seem to be a great amount of uh, quality for a decent fee in the winging position, so we had to revert to someone who was just accomplished there and then train them in that position so they become natural, and he will be that inside forward on the left-hand side. 
Our starting goalkeeper, Klaus Jensen, joined us from Copenhagen for £7.75 million. Now, this is probably the weakest goalkeeper we've had in the Premier League for quite some time, and he's still fantastic. I mean, we have been blessed over the years with newly promoted sides, being able to get really, really good keepers, and this is just another one. £7.75 million, then 24 years old, Dan. Hopefully, he will come in and be fantastic for us. Next to join us was Ian Salvi from Lons for nine and a half million quid. A right back, a much needed upgrade in that right back spot. Luke Matheson, of course, left the club to join FC Lorient. So uh, getting a French guy in replacement just seems suitable. Ian Salvi then, he is injured for three weeks. Of course he is, so he won't be available for today's game. But once he is available, he will be our starting right back. And I think he's incredibly well-rounded. Physically, he's gifted. And uh, it's exactly what we need in that right back spot. David Nuno joined us from Monaco for £12.5 million. Pounds. He will be our starting centre-back and he definitely will complement Jim Garcia in a massive, massive way. Mentally, he's superb, which is one of the main aspects of the reasons why I wanted to sign him. Jim Garcia, or other centre-half, is all pace, not a lot in the, uh, te uh, the mental uh, category, whereas David Nuno is like the complete centre-half. Three-star current, four-star potential, don't believe it. It's absolute bollocks and uh, fantastic to bring him in. Next to join us was Fabio Andrea for £13.5 million from Brazil. He is injured. Same as our other wing back, uh, the right back, but fantastic. Really, really attacking player. Exactly the sort of player we need. Playing on that left hand side, being able to take advantage of the space left by the inside forward on that side. And he's just suitably well rounded in pretty much everything. His mental category is the weakest part of his game. Um, and it is something that we are working on in his individual training. But. Regardless of that, at 23 years old, I think he's going to be absolutely phenomenal, particularly attacking. Next to join us was Martin Alfonso from Penarol for 14.75 million quid. He's not playing up front, he's playing on the right-hand side. He's going to be an inverted winger on that right-hand side. Uh, Left-footed, mercenary, a decent enough player, I would say. A four-star current, five-star potential. Me coaches really highly rate this lad. Excellent technique, good dribbling, decent enough crossing, great first touch. He is a, definitely a well-worthy inverted winger. And having the inverted winger and the inside forward leaves plenty of space for our wing-backs to be able to exploit. And um, I'm glad to bring him in. It's a similar situation to the left-hand side. There wasn't really that great in terms of quality for people who were natural in that right-hand side. So we had to improvise and Alfonso was the man who came in. Now this might be my favourite signing. Yuri Karaviev from CSKA Moscow for £22 million, pounds, a striker supreme, and I'm hoping this boy will bag all of the goals. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had a striker this good at this stage of the season once in the Premier League. Obviously, we've signed excellent strikers in January transfer windows in particular, but this is the first time we're going to have a full season with a truly brilliant centre-half, 20 agility, eh, centre-half, centre-forward, 20 agility, 18 balance, 17 pace, 15 acceleration. His physicals are fine. Mentally, is fine as well. Work rate a little bit low, but that's fine. Uh, first touch is a little bit low, but that's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. I absolutely love this lad, and I think he's going to be fantastic for us, and we are banking quite a lot on him, spending £22 million of our budget to bring him in. Hopefully, he does the business. And finally is Andy Patton, signed from Rangers for £26 million. I'll not lie, a lot of this deal hinged on the fact that he was Scottish and he wasn't a foreign player, but he is still absolutely unbelievable. Perfectionist personality, so we've got him mentoring a lot of players in our squad to get them with a similar sort of personality. 21st touch, 13 passing, 17 technique, 15 dribbling, 16 decisions, 13 flair. He's just a great advanced playmaker in that attack and midfield role. Currently valued at 38 and a half million quid. We had to work to get this deal over the line. His contract demands were quite high and we had to slowly but surely bring them down after every week he was willing to negotiate again and uh, we did eventually get the deal over the line and I'm absolutely thrilled. So that's it in terms of the transfer activity. £114 million spent, uh, what's that, a net of somewhere around the £80 million mark and that leaves us with, what, £4 million remaining and 99k available in the wages. So unless the board end up pumping some more money into the club uh, further down the line, it's unlikely we're going to be able to do too much in the January, but there's always ways and means to get that working. Before we have a look at our squad and what our best first 11 looks like, I will just have a quick check to see what our former clubs have been doing. Birmingham City then, uh, one of the teams who've stayed in the Premier League the longest. They have sold Fabio Roberto, that fantastic centre-half, 
for £59 million to Manchester City. That's a poor bit of business. But they've spent a lot of money as well, spending £94 million. So uh, none of our former players really there in that list. Huddersfield, have they sold any of our former players? Andres Pitre, that was the centre half I was thinking of. So they have sold Terence Platt finally for £17.75 million. Quid. Uh, a decent little right winger, but uh, I didn't really like him that much. And Nottingham Forest, I know, have made one major sale. Gorka Calvo has left to join Real Madrid for £80 million. So I would say that's £11 million that we spent. Very well spent. So he's going to join the Spanish Giants. And uh, Nottingham Forest did reinvest the money, spending £85 million. One of which was Kevin Magia from Chelsea. Our former man, of course, at Leeds United. A couple of others that saw Lucas Pinter, David Ballas. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the players that we recognise. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, incestuous stuff going on between our former clubs in terms of trading players and things like that. So this is our best 11 from uh, if everybody is fit. There's only two faces who were in the first 11 last season. Of course, Jim Garcia, we've talked about him. He's developed quite nicely over the summer, as you can see, by his physicals. And uh, he's definitely a well-worthy companion to David Nuno in that centre-back spot. And David Pierre ends up keeping his spot in defensive midfield as the deep-lying playmaker. Of course, we signed him for £6 million during the January transfer window. And if we were to get a massive offer for him, I would be very, very interested in selling. And it's definitely an area of the pitch where I already know there's players that can improve it if we had the funding. But everywhere else, the other nine players in the first 11 are all the new signings. Jensen, Salvi, Nuno, Fabio Andre, Gil, Alfonso, Paton, Shreto. How am I going to say his name? What's his first? Alexander. Alexander on that left-hand side. Karaviev. We will just uh, remove that second name. and uh, So he's now Alexander. And at least in my mind, this might very well be the best first 11 we've ever had at this stage of a Premier League campaign. I think we've had better uh, first 11s after January at all the clubs when we've been able to make a couple of other deals happen. But at least for the first six months of the season, I think this is the best we've ever had it. And that takes us to today's first game, which is at home against Manchester City. Not exactly the kind of thing I was hoping for. I'll tell you what we're going to do, actually. I want to see what Leeds United and Barnsley have done. They are the two clubs that I would like to get promoted as soon as possible and back into the Premier League. So Leeds had another huge clear out in terms of sales, selling £74 million worth of talent and bringing in £59 million. Or so they've spent plenty. Alexis Villa being the highest one. Obviously, ever since they've got relegated, as you can see, the outs far outweigh the ins, as you would imagine. So, uh, they really, I think it's going to be a few years before Leeds United really get their act together and start to make things work again. And Barnsley have sold £215 million worth of players. Jacques Bertrand joining Valencia for £72 million. I mean, whew. That is so much money to be selling. And they also spent a hundred. They spent a hundred and four. I'm buzzing about spending a hundred and fourteen in the prem. I mean, it appeals in comparison. But uh, yeah, our former sides are just starting that rebuild that they're going to have to do. So Man City then, our first game. We are at home, which is nice, but uh, we're not really expecting anything out of this game. This is the first time these boys have all played together in a competitive match, and uh, it's going to take a lot for us to even get a point out of this game. We're playing two, our two back wing backs, otherwise we are full strength. De Julio and Saki Denley coming in at left back and right back respectively. And uh, let's get into the game. So Man City come at us with a 4-2-3-1 formation. I'm not even going to look at their players. I don't want to depress myself. Let's get into the game and see how we get on. First highlight of the game comes six minutes in. Gill with the cross is cleared by the Man City defence and Jose Emmanuel completely outpaces our players. He's in the box now. He finds De Boer and Mike De Boer puts Manchester City 1-0 up seven minutes in. Not, not an ideal start, especially getting conceded from a counter-attack, boys. Are we? Another highlight now, 12 minutes in. It's Manchester City on the attack down this right-hand side. You're obviously going to be very, very capable of keeping possession so um, if we do win the ball, we've got to make the most of it. Jose Emmanuel picks it up on this left-hand side once again, gets past his man, and has an awful strike. Free kick, Man City, 30 minutes in. Can we hit the wall and maybe counter? Uh, no, we can't. He hits the bar instead. Come on, boys. Pat on. Finds Alexander on this left-hand side. He tries to find Karaviev. That's great block by the defender. I'm surprised he went for the strike there. He probably should have looked to play the back post. But we do have a corner, and it is Pat on who is going to take it. He aims at Gill. He gets his head nod. The thing about Gill, by the way, 
when I've set up my corner tactic. He is six foot six with good jump and reach, good strength, decent bravery, good heading. You know, I'm thinking Gill might be able to get uh, double figures this season from corners. I'm certainly hoping so. De Boer coming down the right-hand side. Great challenge by Pierre, but it's, we lose the ball again. De Julio does manage to get rid of Alexander, and that's the end of that. A decent first-half performance from us, going by the match stats, I would say. Obviously not really keeping possession, but uh, we've limited Manchester City in terms of chances. I don't know how they've only had a few shots when we've seen highlights from them uh, pretty much every time, but... We'll kick off for the second half, pr relatively content with how the performance has gone. And we'll see how we get on for the second. And Manchester City win the ball early on, but Pat on wins it back. He drives through, he's in the box. Pat on, can't score. We'll stick with his corner. Come on, Gil, get your heads on this. Nah, he's not there. Another highlight now, Alexander wins the ball in the defensive area. Plays it up to Karaviev and Andy Pat on is combining with him. Karaviev's in behind. No, that, that was a tame shot. <laughs> Come on, boys. We are definitely holding our own against Manchester City here. We just can't afford to concede again. Alexander picks it up on the left. Finds De Giulio overlapping. Um, he tries to find Caravier. He does so as well. That's a great strike, but it's a great save by Mario. And we're going to have ourselves a corner. Who is the man taking it? I forgot. It's Pat on taking it from this side. Whips it in. Gills there. He's going to win that header every single time. And before long, he's going to start scoring. <laughs> Half an hour remaining. We're on the attack again down the left. Caravier wins the header. Hits the bar. And it's cleared by Man City defence. Corner time. I'm excited. Pat on to Gill. He, wanted to, he wins it again. <laughs> right, Alfonso's not having the greatest game on that right-hand side. We do have Oscar Remberg on the bench to be able to bring on straight away. Um, and that's a change I don't mind making. 15 minutes to go. I'm thinking maybe Karaviev comes off as well for Jacob Samuelson. Give him his shot in the Premier League. We do have a highlight before the substitute happens though. Pat on. Tries to find Caravia, but it's cleared by Fabio Roberto, the former Birmingham man. Uh, Saki Denley on this right-hand side in a pocket of space. Can't get the cross in. This is why I don't want Saki Denley starting. I want Ian Salvi starting. Oh, we win the ball back, though. Patron to Alexander. And Alexander gets his first goal of the season and levels things up 75 minutes in. It's Andy Patron with the assist. And it's a complete calamity in the Manchester City defence. Let's say this again. Jose Emmanuel backed into a corner. Tries to get rid. Gill wins it. Pat on to Alexander. And with 15 minutes remaining, we are well on top in this game. Free kick for us. Andy Pat on takes a back post. Hit the bar. Samuelson can't get there. Nuno back in. Garcia. <laughs> listen, listen. Can we beat Manchester City in our first game in the Premier League? Jim Garcia gets his first goal of the season to put us 2-1 up with only 10 minutes remaining. You can't say we don't deserve it. We have been banging and banging and banging on the door and we finally managed to break through. And look at these match stats. We are doing absolutely phenomenally. A couple of minutes remain, we'll make our final substitute of the day. Um, who do I want to bring on? I'll bring on Lashard for Alexander on that left-hand side. Give him some game time with four minutes to go. Two and a half minutes to go. We have ourselves a highlight. Bartels whipped in by Man City. Can we get cleared? No, we can't. Fabio Silva <laughs> hit the bar. He was offside anyway. But uh, are we going to get away with this? One minute remain. Come on. What a way to start, lads. Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City 1. We take three points and that really was unexpected. <laughs> We've just Have we ever beat Manchester City with any former side? I can't even think of a time where we have actually beat Manchester City. So to do it in our first game is absolutely unbelievable. Alexander and Jim Garcia being the heroes of the day. And uh, every single one of them deserves a full pat on the back. Well, lads, that's going to be it for today's episode. I don't know when we're coming back. Uh, somewhere around here. But uh, absolutely unbelievable scenes in that game. Hopefully we don't then just start throwing it away against sides we are competitive against. And uh, yeah... I'm eager to see how you react to that episode and how you think of our signings in that Manchester City game. But anyway, boys, until next time, go well, leave a like, get subscribed, and until next time, take it easy.